so how did you first get interested in acting? Was it because of Moira Schurer? Or? No, I, I don't know. I feel like I was always interested in it. I mean, um, my uncle was a was a professional actor. He acted um, on Broadway with Laurence Olivier when he when his company came, um, and he, there was only a few actors, American actors, that were chosen to be part of the company, and he was one of them. And my dad did some acting when he was younger, too, at the Playhouse, at the Omaha Playhouse. He took me to plays and things, so I was always sort of, you know, starry-eyed about that. Uh, I just remember as early as grade school, writing plays and um, for myself to star in and direct, of course, uh, <laughs> and finding plays in the library for my friends and for us all to do, so I think it's always been there. Do you remember your first play production that you acted in? The first one that I acted in, full scale production, was Finian's Rainbow at high uh, at Marion High School, and I was in the chorus. And what were some of your other early roles? My junior year, I played Beatrice in the effective Gamma Rays and Man of the Moon Marigold, so that was like huge. That was a big deal. And then uh, I played Golda in Fiddler on the Roof my senior year. And then I went to College of St. Mary's because I got a scholarship, a singing scholarship, music scholarship. And I lasted about one semester, and they didn't have a theater department. I was like, oh, man, I don't like this. So <laughs> I transferred to UNO. Um, and at UNO, I mean, I did a lot. I was there a really long time. So um, <laughs> I did a lot of plays. After college, I started uh, auditioning around town. I was married, and so was sort of planning on sticking around here. And I did some shows at the Playhouse, and I was working at the Firehouse Dinner Theater and the Upstairs Dinner Theater. Um, did a lot of sort of silly farces and dinner theater stuff, musicals. And, you know, as anybody that tries to make a living as an actor around here knows that you can't. Uh, as, you know, just only that. So I did a lot of other jobs. I was a travel agent and um, I worked in the school system. When the Nebraska Shakespeare Festival started, I started working with them during the summer and then I became the director of education for them. And I found through that that I really loved teaching and directing. So um, I sort of started veering down that road, um, getting more directing work and, and doing more teaching. And then I thought I wanted to go back and get my master's degree so that I could teach at a university level. So I got my master's um, in 2000 at uh, University of Nebraska at Lincoln. And then I moved to Florida and I was a director of education at a theater in Ocala, Florida for about three years. Moved back here because my parents were sick. Started working in the schools and just freelancing again and then got hired at Iowa Western to run the theater department. You hear the term flyover country, what comes to mind to you? Well, I, I just think it's ignorance. I mean, I think it's easy to say it's, how do you dismiss, you know, a huge portion of the country? Um, that's just ignorance and that's people who don't know any better. Because maybe it is that you're flying over that that's I guess that is for me that is it is derogatory and it is saying that life really only exists on the coasts and anything in between isn't really worth thinking about or talking about and that's ridiculous it's a huge country so a lot of the country then would be flyover country how would you describe your character and Martha in flyover country well I think she is a farm wife I think she's pretty straightforward, you, you know, what you see is what you get with Martha. I think that she is long-suffering. She's kind of married to a horse's ass. And, uh, and, and her, her brother is also that way. Um, I, just in terms of my own political leanings, we'll say. But, um, and I think Martha is more tolerant than either of those men in her life. Um, I think she has a, a sense of humor, and I think she loves her family. I think she's content with her life. It's a fine turkey this year, hon. Nice and moist. Yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> Everything is. Something the matter, Russ? Seem a little depressed? Oh, no, I'm okay. It's just, I wish Grandpa was here. That's all. I understand, dear. Why don't you come on over here with me and help me get the dessert ready? Sure. Okay. While you're doing that, I'll show Todd here my Bubble Reagan scrapbook. I was a great president and a real hero, so come along. Can't wait. So, 
Well, what can I do to help? Oh, nothing. Everything is done. I just wanted to talk to you for a minute. Oh. Okay. I think Todd is really a nice guy. Yeah, he's great, isn't he? He's my best friend. How long have you two been together? We've known each other for about a year now. <laughs> you two are such a cute couple. Couple? Oh, I'm not like your uncle. I'm much more open-minded. I don't follow. What are you trying to say? I know you and Todd are gay and going together, and I think it's great. No, no, no. We're, I'm not gay. We're certainly not a gay couple. That's for damn sure. Come on, honey. You don't have to put on an act for me. I've known you were gay for years. Excuse me? You what? I've known you were gay since you were five years old. Remember how you made me buy you those cute pink pajamas? I remember the way you used to dance around in our living room with my wigs and makeup? You can't fool me. And by the way, I think it's wonderful. Here, I want to show you something. Look up in that cupboard and grab that basket, okay. will you? My friend Frida turned me on to these books. They're gay romances. <laughs> in fact, I've become addicted to reading them. I get so caught up in the stories and, and the characters' predicaments, I can't even sleep at night. So you see, honey, I, I do understand. Martha, I'm not gay. Honest. It doesn't do any good to be in denial. You and Todd are meant for one another. I can say that. The best thing you could do is accept yourself and get married to him. You know, it's legal in Iowa. Have you done any other film work? I have. I did a show, uh, a movie. Actually, I think when I did it, um, they, I, I don't think they had a title yet, but... Juliette Lewis was the producer, and it was called, the working title was 17 Sips, and I played sort of trailer park mom in that. And then I've done, I've done several um, on-camera TV commercials for Half Price Store and Nebraska Lottery and a lot of other things, and I've, I've done a lot of voiceover work, um, jingles and singing jingles, but also I was the voice of Ms. Moynihan, who was the teacher for Dino Squad which was a, a Saturday morning cartoon for ABC that was had a couple of seasons. So, yeah, I've done that kind of stuff. But I haven't done an awful lot of film work. I have auditioned, but I just haven't always been cast. So this was really exciting for me to be part of this project. But what do you hope people take away from Flower Country when they finally get a chance to see the finished film? Well, I mean, I think that the timing couldn't be better. We are at... Um, point in, our, in this country where this is a huge issue, you know, rights of uh, the LBGT community. Um, it's so at the forefront right now, and we're at a crossroads as a people, as a nation. So um, I, I guess I hope that they will see this and maybe have some insight into their own intolerance and their own bigotry. and. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you hope that they go away thinking, yeah, maybe I've been wrong. Maybe I need to take a look at this inside myself. Thank you.